Welcome, my name is Syrah. I'm gonna take you on an end of July garden tour. This will be the second half of my gardens. The first July garden tour, I showed you the food forest area and south end vegetable plot. This evening, I'm gonna show you a bunch of annual vegetable rows. And as we move down the lane here, we move into some more uh, perennials and some vines, some gojis and grapes, and a few fruit trees with guilds, kind of a bit of a food forest again in one little area. Got about four or five kind of sections here. I hope this tour will inspire you and you can pick up a few tips along the way to help you grow more food abundance in your life. This is the hops growing at the entrance here on the fence line. Volunteer potatoes. And this area is a bit shaded. We have dappled sun in here. Shade a couple times throughout the day, so I'm growing lots of greens in this area. Tuscan kale. The romaine and prize head. And some perennial chicken. Perennial chicken. <laughs> perennial sugar loaf. Uh, chicory and two varieties of curly kale, uh, winter boar and westlands. I'm really keeping it picked back this summer just to keep the bugs, try to keep the aphids off and the bugs to a minimum. The other biggest trick to growing lettuce into the heat of summer is just the variety and romaine can tolerate uh, a bit more heat. Uh, the second thing is just lots of water. And so variety and consistent water and just a little bit of shade and you'll be golden for the heat of the summer. Some really nice chard growing quite close together here. And again, I'm just keeping it picked back a little bit more, um, but the chard can grow quite close together. This is peppermint variety, my favorite chard variety. A couple of San Marzano tomatoes. So here we have a bed of carrots, a trench of potatoes and a row of fava beans. Uh, with the carrots, I recently put a top dressing of composted cow manure. Another good tip for growing really good carrots uh, is just to loosen the soil really deeply. If you're practicing no dig methods like I am primarily, just use a broad fork or a thick pitch fork just to loosen the soil. You don't want to turn it over, but just loosen it down nice and deep so the tap roots can grow really nice and deep and you get nice beautiful long carrots. So with the potatoes, I did start with a deeply dug trench. And I've done both methods, uh, no dig and dug. Here we have a dug trench with a bunch of organic fertilizer in there on the bottom, and then just the typical mounding potato technique. We've got some composted cow manure and some straw on top. And the soil here is a bit more acidic, a fair bit of peat moss in here, which will really help uh, aid in scab reduction. We have a row of the fava beans behind here. This one is called the Windsor. They will finish out about five or six feet high and they're helping fix the nitrogen for my potatoes. So it's a really nice uh, companion planting. They help each other or the beans help the potatoes and it saves a lot of space because you can grow the potatoes in the front and the beans at the back. So here we have a new bed of carrots and what I like to do is soak my bed down, make shallow furrows with a board or a piece of doweling, sow my carrot seed out cover it with a potting mix very lightly, soak it a little bit more, and then put a white tarp on for about five to 10 days. And then we're germinated, take that off, and we're pretty much golden. So when you're sowing seeds midsummer, especially carrots, it's a really good idea to put a shade cloth for the first couple of weeks at least, once they've come up, because the sun can just singe them right off, especially if you aren't keeping a good eye on them and keeping them really well watered. Left some leeks in to gather some seed. We've got two more rows of newly planted potatoes here and a row of cauliflower. Got some more potatoes here. Behind here we have a row of meter long beans. We grow up this trellis here. Some more leeks here for seed. Got a row of shelling peas. More potatoes. I really had a lot of potatoes to plant this season. A bunch of my eating potatoes got too warm and started sprouting. So I had a lot of potatoes to plant out. Another bed of carrots. And some did get singed by the sun here. So I planted some uh, turnips on the end here. Here we have a bed of culinary sage that's flowering now. Self-seeded chamomile in here. 
Chamomile is volunteer, so I just let it go. And it's become a total sage and chamomile bed this year. I harvested it twice already, and then I cut it back quite a lot. I've been watering it, hoping that it's gonna come back again. It's starting to. Yep, more potatoes. Created this bed just by using pathway composted wood chips. I'm starting to flower now. Some really gorgeous, very large cabbages here. Some of the tallest and biggest ones I think I've ever grown. I actually ran out of netting. I put some on my other uh, cabbages, but it's a bit of a bummer. I'm kind of stressing out about all the um, cabbage moss getting on them. Skeena red cherry, self-fertile. And so I'm propagating some Russian red hardtop garlic under my cherry tree here. I did so by sowing out the bulbils, they are called, the seeds inside of the scape. And it takes about two years to develop a big enough bulb and cloves so that you can plant out your crop in the fall and have a new, uh, basically new stock that is disease free or just in my case, uh, more garlic seed uh, without the extra expensive cost of buying garlic seed from the store. So along the fence line here, we have a hedgerow of sea buckthorn that will grow into a nice thick hedge eventually. And all these were started initially from three mother plants. I also have a bunch more babies in my nursery, uh, two females and one male. I think I have two other males in this area as well. Row of potatoes in the pathway. I also grew potatoes right next to my sea buckthorn uh, one or even two years. I really did really quite well because the sea buckthorn is a nitrogen fixer as well. Nice big bed of garlic. Oh, there's a misscape. Rose is about to bloom again, kind of a second wave here. A young cherry tree here. This is a blush variety called Rainier. This will be her third year. Same with the other tree. The other one's quite a bit larger though. Little guild under here. Some volunteers and I did plant the onions out here though. Gorgeous hollyhock right here. Uh, this was a volunteer and I left this one just because it can be tied up on the fence line right here. They really have multiple uh, leads. This is one plant, but they really bush out nicely when they're on their own. Nice large onion bed here. This is the majority of my onions here. Uh, there's a few hundred in here. They're really starting to bulb up quite nicely now. Yeah, look at the structure. All those, all that layering means these have potential to get pretty big. When you see all that, it represents how many layers, how big your onions will actually get. The bigger the tops are on your onions, the better and larger your bulbs are going to be. Down the middle here, I'm actually growing a scallion, purple scallion. I like to just like multiple sow the scallions, plant them as clusters. Oh, and sometimes you see them going to seed. I wanna nip that off. The odd one will go to seed, but they shouldn't generally because these are started the same year. When you use onion sets, they almost always go to seed. And that's another tip. You wanna always take the seed heads off of your sets. Um, but yeah, we have a couple more here too. They got a little too hot or cold or, you know, they're quite sensitive to all conditions. Onions are thermoperiodic. There's that word again. Nice little zinnia end bed to attract the bees and some thyme. All right, so here we have a blueberry and squash creation bed. I think it's pretty fantastic myself. These are somewhere between five and seven year old blueberries that were planted out last fall and they're just really taken off. I did give them some fertilizer. I think I got the soil pretty right with all the broken down wood chips in there. 
They love that nice acidic soil. Um, they are putting on new green growth. The color is right. And we're just bumper cropping out still because they do set their uh, budding flowers uh, in the fall. So they were already set, uh, but they seem really nice and healthy and vibrant uh, this spring. And I did leave all the flowers for the bees because it was just swarmed with bees here. So I really couldn't take the flowers off. I thought it was just total disservice to the bees. So they ended up, you know, staying on. And then before I knew it, the berries were forming. But I think they're doing just fine. Super nice and green and they got new growth and we're cropping out huge here. I planted Uchiki curry squash in between in sets of two and three between the blueberry plants and we're cropping out huge with the uh, squash as well. What an amazing duo, blueberry and squash. They do require different soil pHs but since it's a new bed I made nice little squash holes. Sometimes it doesn't matter as much as you might think it does. But there's just a fantastic amount of squash growing here. I mean, they're just everywhere. Lemon balm at the top here, smells incredible. The squash loves growing up on uh, other bushes. So it's kind of perfect for the squash because they can climb right over and get their flowers up nice and high for the bees to find them. The squash is getting a little out of hand growing over top of my blueberries. I want to pull some of the runners down a little bit more. I do want my berries to be okay as well and ripen up nicely. Got some asters in here to attract more bees. Some zinnias, some cilantro that's going to seed. The squash are just growing everywhere. And lots have been pollinated because they're, you know, fist size or larger. The ones down on the ground here, it's perfect that there's some clover growing in this area. So it'll bring the bees right down and then they'll find the squash flowers. Look at all those. Just everywhere. They dig already too. That one's going right in the berries there. Yeah, this is gonna be a big squash harvest and blueberry harvest and these are pretty thick here I'm trying to give this whole bed a lot of water okay so in this next little area do you have kind of a bit of a, a food forest going on a bunch of vining crops these hardy blues they're still trying to adjust quite yellow i did pull off a bunch of the berries Maybe just because they are so large, they are having a hard time with the transplant. It looks like we're starting to green up a little bit more there. They're taking a while. I have another variety too, blue gold, that didn't do too well with the transplant. Look at the berries. <laughs> it's so amazing to go from hardly any blueberries and then the next year just to like full on abundance, mouthfuls of blueberry goodness. Felt so alive, and girl, we were thriving on kisses and sunshine and mischief. Yeah, we had one of those things. Some nice volunteer nasturtiums. Saw a big toad. I think probably the first toad I've ever seen on my property. Quite large, big as my hand, right in here. And we have some butter bush, a bushing variety butternut. And they're just loving this location. Got some fruit sets on there. Just a bit of dappled shade that the blueberries provide for the squash. It's super ideal. Got a carrot in here. So I mulched with a whole bunch of carrot greens and last fall and one sprouted up. So perfect to attract beneficial insects. We have pole bean, emirate, stringless, French filet. Been collecting the seed for a while now. All right, we're gonna do some grapevines here. 
I call this the big bud tree. I have uh, some metal fencing wrapped around her. This beautiful blush grape is growing up. Well, we're just cropping out huge here. At least twice as many um, clusters as last year. I'm super excited for the grapes this year. They're just absolutely everywhere. And I do want to get kind of a 360 kind of yurt style arbor around this tree for these guys to grow out onto. However, I do have a uh, hascap berry, also known as honeyberry, growing as kind of the guild around the grape and the big bud tree. Uh, so they probably will get too shaded if I do the arbor thing, but so, you know, we'll see. But these are, the grape is getting pretty large now. My grape is growing from right here. So I have been giving fertilizer and lots of water in this location. It's a little uh, pickling cuke tower. Yeah, honeyberries all the way around. And I just pulled off the, the uh, bird netting, which I kind of got on a little bit late. So the birds did get a lot of the honeyberries. They absolutely loved honeyberries. Uh, they'll eat them all unless you net them. A seedless green grape, hemrod, bathtub of yellow wax beans and some more pickling cukes. Green hemrod grape growing right here. So she's growing right there and up the fence and then climbing onto this pussy willow tree here and just completely covering it. And there's tons of fruit clusters everywhere. And she's also taking over this other willow right here. Just falling from the sky. So here we have some Yosta berries um, that are actually kind of dying back this year. It's getting a bit more shaded in here with the kiwis and the big grape vines. Um, I don't think they're getting enough water either. The black currant and a gooseberry cross. Let's back up a little bit here. Right to this side here is a Hugel culture trench uh, blueberry bed. And we do have blueberries all in here. It's maybe a little bit sh more shaded than I would like for blueberries, but they're doing okay. They are taking their time. They were fairly small plants um, initially. And then the strawberries uh, did take over in this area and I recently just dug this whole pathway and everything out. All right, we're approaching the monster zone now. You can see behind me two enormous kiwi vines, one male, one female. They've been growing for about 18 years now. The flowers are kind of a limey green and they do put thousands and thousands of flowers out every spring, but there isn't enough bees to do the job well. So I do need to get some honeybees to get some kiwis. We also have a guild, a honeyberry guild and some daylilies and these yellow pom-pom. So we got a few different air layers. I'm gonna go back to where we were under the honeysuckle here. So we have a finished row of cauliflower, pathway cauliflower, I called this one, because I grew it in the pathway with the broken down wood chips. Oh, well, there's a couple of late ones here. It's supposed to be a purple variety, kind of an odd color though. Uh, but for the most part, they are done. A couple of sprigs there. Strawberries working out pretty well. I actually need to get in here and pick these again. Oh, there's actually quite a lot. Red currant, um, a lovage. They got huge, it actually just snapped off. Got three horseradishes in here, planted this spring. It's our goji berry trellis right here. And I recently read they take at least three years before they start fruiting. I kept waiting for them last year. Last fall, they actually did bloom and but it was way too late for them to produce fruit we have garlic in the front here oh missed some scapes you can always see the ones you missed um, a bit later because they kind of pop up more straight after a while strawberry hydrangea this one i was a clone i did this dragon's tongue succulent works really well for kind of a mulch on here and i always mulch with all the uh the old flowers as well. This makes great mulch. 
the hydrangea old flowers. So I have a couple apple trees with guilds I want to show you. I'm just going to walk around to this side to get a better view. So here we have a Fuji apple and flower guild. We also have this really beautiful owl carving. I went with a friend to pick up some furniture at a sale and they ended up giving me this beautiful owl carving. Someone in the family had carved it from the Vancouver coast. This Fuji apple has taken a bit of a break this year from fruiting. We actually have just four apples, but she's really putting on a lot of vegetative growth. It's getting a lot larger, so next year she'll be able to bear and handle really a lot of fruit, I'm hoping. <clears throat> Got asters and a purple salvia. Really love that one. And we have a cool yellow flowering perennial. And I'm not sure what the name of this plant is. If anyone does know, please leave it in the comments below. Calendula in here, dianthus, asters. <laughs> There's a potato in here actually, because I did grow some potatoes a couple years under the tree. So they keep coming back because I missed one. <laughs> really large Monarda bee bomb here. Volunteer hollyhocks really get around. Really gorgeous and I love them. And the blue gold blueberry is having a bit of a hard time settling into its new soil and location. So the transplant as well. A little herb bed there. Here we have a honey crisp apple. It's doing very well this year. I think it's she's got the most fruit this year so far. I also thinned the fruit already. So you don't want more than a couple at each. I had a flush of a couple different flowers in here and they kind of died back and now some new ones are coming out. This later day lily. The lavender is going strong now. The marshmallow or mallow um, is just volunteers. <laughs> What's he doing, little bear? Gorgeous delphinium. I try to tie all my delphiniums up now with a band around them. Just holds them up, otherwise they really flop down. The bees just love these. Same with the hummingbirds. This is a hybrid tea rose. And just a bit of a flower bed here. Gaylardia started this perennial, also known as Indian blanket in the wild. And then before we go any further, it's got to go back up to here. So here is the squash tower I built two videos back. This is Avalon hybrid, 75 days. They're really starting to take off. Did a whole lasagna bed creation in here. Check out my video uh, to see how I built this one. I'm gonna do some composting worms in there as well to take care of everything on the bottom. Some nice homemade compost and fertilizer and they're just really taking off now. We're showing some male flowers and we're getting some fruit sets now. Another reason to have the hat on here is that I can enclose the whole thing um, if it starts getting too chilly and frosty out in the fall and they're not quite finished. They should finish off nicely and close, but I think they'll be fine without it. Hopefully we have a nice uh, September. I'm brewing some anaerobic tea here, microbe tea uh, made from comfrey and thimbleberry and horse tail and some composted cow manure. So we have a really large cluster of hollyhocks. This is where all the babies come from that are now scattered around my property from self-seeding and I've also planted a few here and there. Absolutely love hollyhocks, they're so magnificent. The bees adore them so much too. They are full of pollen. It's amazing and wonderful to watch the bees uh, climb in there and just get totally powdered in pollen. Plants and bushes with lots of pollen and nectar can be considered a melliferous species. Some new irises from some friends. A bunch of different colors I don't have. That's pretty awesome, thank you. Bed of carrots. Tomatoes, a few different varieties. Dwan Flame, Orange Saladette, it's one of my faves. And Princep, a Italian drying variety, kind of a plum tomato. Some celery act growing in here as well. And some collards and some spaghetti squash. Doing pretty good here. It's a little bit shaded at the end of the bed here. 
but uh, they're actually doing a little better than I expected. What's this? A blank bed? Oh my. Well, there's my little mountain ash bonsai. Bed of garlic here, almost ready to harvest. Some potatoes, a lot of earlier cabbages. We're pretty much almost ready, a little bit soft still. Got April green and one other one new to me. I forget the name of it. I love the April green variety. All right, so that concludes this kind of whole little area here. We also have some uh, raspberry trellises here. It's kind of a little midsection. There's my red hot pokers. I still haven't planted them out. So on this side we have raspberry trellises, very dark purple variety. It is crossed with a blackberry, but it's very much a raspberry. Uh, this variety is called Anne Golden Raspberry. She does bear two crops, but the spring or summer crop is the largest. It tastes very honey-like, excellent for eating fresh. It's an awesome variety. This is a newer variety for me here. I'm really impressed by this one. It's called Eden. Here's a heritage variety. They make a bit smaller of a berry, but the flavor is excellent. I did cut these ones right back. Um, normally they do bear two crops, but I uh, just cut them right off in the fall. So we're just gonna get one larger crop, hopefully. A bunch of Logan berries here. It's by far one of my favorite berries. Flavor is just super awesome. And they come off with solid centers. I don't think that one's quite ripe. They need to get, they get a little bit darker when they're riper. There's one. There we go. Just one other bed and a little greenhouse to show you. We have a squash tower. It's an early butternut. They are taking a while to start vining out, but they just started. They have a strawberry and dwarf cherry bed. And I've also planted beets in here. And then a little bit later, some leeks. And earlier this spring, I had a crop of broccoli growing right where the leeks are growing now. Chamomile that needs to be cut and a little trellis of cherry tomatoes on the deck entrance. There's my mint patch that's been cut back a couple times and some fall broccoli and cauliflower and some leeks that haven't gone out. Some new um, basil. So here I'm brewing some aerated microbe tea. Got a blend of things in the satchel. Got the air pump there and the air stone. Just creating and growing lots of healthy microorganisms to spray directly on my plants. Builds up a nice film and keeps the bugs off and really aids in vitality. So one nice thing about brewing the aerated tea, takes a bit more effort and some electricity, but it just smells a little bit sweet unlike the anaerobic tea, which is pretty stinky really. Um, so I like to use this one as a foliar application. It's also why I have the satchel here so that it's all ready to go for the sprayer. Keep this netting on top here so the flies don't get in and lay maggots. All right, we got a new uh, specimen here that I'm growing this year. This, I think it's in the gourd family. It's called the serpent. B. Sicilia, serpent squash. It's got these really beautiful white petaled flowers. Haven't seen that before. It's like a cucumber summer squash kind of thing going on, I believe. And they're really great climbers. They're really strong. I haven't needed to wrap them around. Hey, this guy is right up top here now. Awesome, I wanted them to get right up there. Oh yeah, they're making it. Nice. <laughs> They really grow fast some days and you don't notice. The male flowers came out first for about a week now. Yeah, it's gorgeous. Uh, and I wasn't seeing the fruit sets yet, but now we're just starting to get some sets. I've got some lettuce down here. It's probably going a little bit better. No, it's actually fine, but it's also working as a ground cover, kind of a mulch for these guys, so have a butterfly bush in this corner as well. Box of celery here and some lettuce. Cherry tomato tower. Just starting to get some ripe ones here. Sun golds, 
little wing of the greenhouse that I put up on the trellis there just to get a bit more covered growing space. Got peppers in here. These are all brandy wines and black crimsons there. Some zinnias. And this is actually an asparagus bed in here, kind of in the wrong location for my asparagus bed actually. So this is a pepper, eggplant, and celery greenhouse primarily. Nice big box of celery. Try to keep your celery really consistently watered. Never let it dry out for a good crop. I do have partial irrigation set up in here. Still haven't got to it though, so I'm just hand bombing everything still. And another box of celery on this side as well. Got some eggplants, and this is like a two and a half or to three gallon container that I've cut the bottoms open and I sink them into the broken down wood chips in the pathway here. Millionaire hybrid. We're just flowering now. Been picking some leaves off because I have I do see some signs of mites. That's primarily why I'm brewing the aerated tea to spray on my eggplants. Pretty much every year I do get some mites on my eggplants, so really got to keep the microbe tea sprayed on them to build up that layer and make them more resilient to the bugs. Everything in this greenhouse is planted quite late, um, so we're just really getting going now. Uh, sweet peppers, mostly bell types. So I love growing peppers up off the ground in containers. They seem to do really well for me. These are all of my smaller fruiting sweet varieties like Doe Hill, Tomato Cot, Lipstick, Anto High, and Sweet Salsa. So I've got four Tortorello cukes growing here to create a bit more dappled shade. And we've got the bamboo shades. They work really well for a shade cloth, uh, nice and natural. All right, so that's about it. That's the end of the tour now. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you found some inspiration and some tips along the way. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to my channel. And if you'd be so kind to like and share the video with friends, leave a comment below. It really helps push my videos around to new viewers. Keep your heart inspired. We'll see you real soon on the next one.